before we start this video, a large thank you to Conrad, Constandinos, and Joshua for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And an immense thank you to Halo Burner for their continued support of the channel this month on Patreon. I hope you enjoy the video, my friend. Hello, everybody. Today, we are going to optimize our AI a bit, but first, let's go to reset character on the AI character spawner, and I forgot to clear the target when we do reset the character. This will make it so the character would chase you right back to your side of grace. So just call AI character, AI character combat manager, set target null. Uh, also, since we have sleep states now, uh, what we want to do is say AI character idle, or sorry, current state. And we want to call the switch state, so we're going to put them back to their idle state, reset all the flags, so they'll go back to sleep, basically. So just do this, like so, and then we should be good to go. So AI character current state, switch state, pass the idle. Alright, cool. So now onto the video topic, we're going to create a new... Uh, script here and we're going to call this beacon detector so what we're going to do is we're going to make it so when we walk near ai any player uh, in your game you're going to toggle them if they're within a radius and when all players are away from ai we're going to disable them so this will save on memory so let's drop in our namespace and delete the start and update function as is per tradition so question what is beacon a beacon is a trigger that will enable or disable objects or characters as it enters or leaves its radius this is especially for toggling AI characters that are not close to any player, but you can use this for things like uh, pickup item interactables, non-static objects, whatever. If you blend this with additive scenes for bigger worlds, it's really, really, really helpful for your optimization. So I encourage you to look into additive scenes too, but I will cover that eventually in a future video. Um, so we're going to use on trigger exit. We're not going to use on trigger enter, but I will put it in here in case you want to keep any weird debug messages or whatever. Uh, but we're gonna. I'm mostly gonna copy this from Nephilim. I'm gonna edit it a little bit, so please bear with me as I may make a couple of hiccups because uh, I'm kind of translating it in a more simplistic way here. Because what I have in Nephilim is not really necessary for this project. So first, we're gonna get a player if it's null, um, and we're going to assign the player on this game object. We're not actually gonna use the local player. I'm realizing now because again, that's a Nephilim thing. My bad. I'll fix that in a moment uh, because every player is gonna have one of these. And then we're going to check for an AI character manager. We're going to say that by saying AI character is equal to other, get okay, component AI character manager, other being the other clutter that this is exiting. So let's go to the AI character manager for a moment here. Uh, and what we're going to do is come down and just make the two functions we're going to need. So activate and deactivating the AI. So activation will be called when your beacon detector overlaps a beacon and then it will activate the AI, or whoever owns that beacon. Uh, deactivation happens when your beacon detector leaves the radius uh, of an AI character. So basically, if there are three players in your game and they all leave an AI character's radius, that AI character will be deactivated. Uh, bonus points, you can just deactivate the models for anybody who's not in range, uh, but keep the AI active if at least one person's in range. This will save memory for you if you're not in the area. But we'll get to that in a moment. So let's go over and call player equals get component in parent, player manager, and then let's go over now to stay on the beacon texture code actually right below this. We can do a check if the AI is null. So if they're not null, then we're going to basically run some logic here. We're going to say AI character dot deactivate character. And we're going to need to pass a player to that in a moment, but we'll get to that. So over here on activation and deactivation, both are going to require a player manager variable. I'm going to call it player. And then we can also go over to the beacon detector and make sure we pass the player. All right, cool. So I am now going to go back over to the AI character manager. Uh, actually, we're going to go back to the project, go to the AI combat manager. It's going to put it over here. We need a list of players that are within range of this character. You could put it on the AI character manager, but I think it fits better in the combat manager. I'm going to delete the debug stuff we had from the time we were testing the uh, sound effects and making sure the character walked towards them. I'm going to make a new header uh, called activation range, we'll say. And then I'm going to make a list of player managers for all of the players within this range. So list of player managers, and let's just call this players within activation range equals new list player manager. So this basically is going to keep track of how many players are within the range of this AI to stay active. And it will keep track of which players specifically are there. So when you activate a player, you're going to be at, or sorry, when you uh, activate the character, the AI character, so when you're within range, you're going to be added to this activation list. Um, likewise, when you deactivate it, when you leave its radius, you're going to be removed from that list. So if there's three people in your game, obviously, if you leave uh, the range, you can't just disable the AI outright because it still has to process logic for two other people. You can, though, toggle the models for the character that left, so they save on memory. You know, especially if you have like real-time lights and a lot of stuff in the in the environment, casting real-time shadows can be a bit expensive. 
So just disabling the renders or enabling them uh, for local players as they enter or leave the radius, regardless of the AI being active or inactive, can be helpful. So I'll leave that there as a comment. That's something you can do. You just want to get the mesh renders on the AI and just toggle them as you want. So I'm going to here and saying using Unity netcode. And we're going to check for the network manager singleton being a host, because if we're not the host, we don't want to edit network variables. Uh, specifically the is active variable we have for toggling the game object as a whole on or off. Made that a, a few videos back, a long time now ago, I think, for sure. So we're gonna say if the AI character comment manager at players within range count is greater than zero, then we're going to activate it. Otherwise we're going to disable it. So AI character network manager is active dot value is equal to true. And then otherwise you're gonna set that to false. So there's a bit of danger here though. We're checking this list, we're checking the count. But if you have a player in your game and he leaves the game and his object gets deleted, uh, there will be a null reference in that list, but it will still count as something in the list because there will be an empty space in that list. So for that reason, we should always make a function to add and remove players to the list. And every time a player is added or removed, we're gonna go through the list and check for null entries in the list and remove them. Because we're just comparing the count of the list. And again, if I add five players to a list, and then destroy one of their game objects in the game, so if like they leave, then that entry in the list will not be removed. It'll just say uh, missing or null where the player used to be. So for that reason, like I said, we have to check every time we add or remove a player to the list for those null entries and remove them. So for adding a player to within range, we're gonna say if players within activation range contains player return, we don't wanna add them twice. Otherwise we add them by saying players in activation range add player. Then we just go through the list here and we just go through players in activation range dot count and we say if players within act activation range i is equal to null, we want to remove at i from this list. So players within activation range dot remove at, and we pass i. Do the same thing here for removing from the list, but obviously we do the reverse. If the list does not contain this player, return, we can't remove him if the list doesn't contain him. Otherwise, continue and remove him from the list, then iterate through the list, check for any null entries, and remove them. Okay, cool. So on activate character, let's just use our new function now. We don't need to check for an if here. We can say AI character comment manager add player uh, to players within range. And then the same is true for down here. We can just call remove player from players within range. And then we can get on with the rest of our logic. So let's save that. All right, what do we want to do now? Well, if you want to check for those renderers, enable or disable them, do the same thing here, but disable the renderers for the player who was leaving the range. Um, and again, this will save our memory if you have a lot of AI in your game, uh, just good to do. So we're gonna drop a beacon on the transform of this. What is a beacon? Well, if we disable the game object in its entirety, we need to drop something on it that can be triggered. So we're disabling the, we're disabling the game object so we can save our memory so update functions aren't ran and you can't see the model, et cetera, et cetera. But we want to drop a game object here with a simple collider that when we touch it with our beacon detector again, it will re-enable the AI. That's all a beacon is. Very simple. So if we're not the host, we don't want to do any of the network stuff. Um, so we're gonna return. So we're gonna say if is dead dot, whoops, sorry, this is Nephilim, wrong notes. One sec, let me just, uh, we're gonna say if AI character combat manager dot players within activation range dot count, again, is over zero, we do the same thing. We're gonna make sure that it is active. Otherwise, we're gonna make sure that it is inactive. So same thing as we did above. We're just going to simply call upon our network flag is active. And then we're going to say AI character network manager is active dot value is equal to true. Otherwise down here is active dot value is equal to false. So we're just going to say AI character comment manager dot set target null as well. When you're deactivating, you want to just clear the target. Uh, otherwise, if something happens to the target when they get reactivated and it's null entry, um, yeah, it's just better to clear it out. So we're going to say AI character network manager is active is equal to false. Uh, now the beacon portion. Let's go ahead and create a new script. I'm gonna call mine AI activation beacon. And keep in mind guys, you can use this for anything that's not static. If you wanna save some memory, like if you have uh, items, particle effects, environmental effects, anything in your environment that is not static uh, that you want to toggle when you're without a range, you can just set up a beacon system for it. I use it for uh, pickup items that are in my world spawns in Nephilim and environmental effects that I deem kind of taxing, like crazy particle effects, waterfalls, stuff like that. I also use additive scenes with this, so I, basically turn off a lot of stuff or unload it completely that's not being used. So under the AI activation beacon, we're going to create a serializable field for AI character manager. We're gonna call this beacon owner. And we're gonna make a public void set owner of beacon. So when the, when the beacon's created, we're gonna make this require an AI character variable and just set beacon owner to whatever AI character you pass. I know I'm going very fast right now. Apologies, slow down the video and rewind if you have to. 
public void reactivate AI character. We're going to make this require a player variable. We're going to say if the beacon owner is null for whatever reason return, it should not be in your scene. Uh, if it's uh, if it's null, something's up. Beacon owner dot activate character and pass the player that triggers it. So we're going to reactivate character on trigger enter, uh, and we're going to pass a player manager. So we're just going to say player player is equal to other dot get component player manager. Uh, if player is equal to null, I think that's wrong. Actually, I'm checking Netflix notes again. I'm probably going to edit this in a second um, because we're putting our beacon detector on our player itself. Anyway, I'll come back to this in a moment. I'll know if it works or not. Let's go over to the AI character manager again. Uh, make sure I'm not forgetting. Right. You want to put the host thing down here because the beacon should appear for both people uh, regardless of whether you're the host or not because we do that for toggling the models if you want to do that. Right. So header. Uh, up here, new variable, activation beacon. Let's make a protected. You can make a serializable field if you want to see it, but I don't need to see it here, so I'm going to make it protected uh, for AI activation beacon. I'm making it protected because any class that inherits from this, if you want to just use this variable, um, we can do that by using protected, not private. So override, we're going to call on destroy. When this game object is destroyed, you want to also destroy your beacon if it's not null. Uh, this is important for like leaving your game and joining another person's game. You don't want these beacons to linger in your scene when you load into a multiplayer game with somebody else. Uh, now, down here on deactivate character, we're going to drop the beacon. We're going to do that by saying, if the beacon does not equal null, what do you want to do? Well, we want to set the beacon to our transform first. So we're going to say beacon game object that transform position equals wherever the AI is when it gets deactivated. And then we're going to set the beacon game object itself to active. Okay, so beacon.game object set active to true. Now, we've never actually made the beacon yet. We've never declared or gotten it in any shape or form, so we have a variable for it, but like it's not on our AI character. You know, you don't want to drag these in every AI character. I mean, maybe you do, but I'm going to make a function just to create one for every AI character by default. I don't want to drag it in every time I make a new AI. That could get kind of troublesome if you forget to do it, if you make like 40 or 50 AI. So if the beacon is equal to null, uh, else. So if you call create beacon for some reason, it's not null. Um, we're just going to set it to the... Uh, transform dot position of this character, and then we're going to set it to active. We're going to say beacon dot game object dot set active is equal to true. Uh, if the beacon is null, we want to instantiate it from somewhere. So a good place to do that is to go to our world AI manager. But first, let's actually make our beacon game object. I'm going to make a sphere. I'm going to get rid of the mesh render and the mesh filter because I just don't need them. Now you don't need to make this very big because as long as it's like, you know, actually toggleable, but you need to add a layer to it. So I'm going to use layer 31, call this a beacon. And the beacon will be again detected by the beacon detector. That's what's going to have a large radius. The beacon itself just needs to be a little tiny sphere. Uh, put layer on this beacon and let's add the components AI activation beacon. So I'm just going to drag this up here like so. And I can save this as a prefab, but first I am going to name it to AI beacon, just like so. I'm going to drag it in here and make sure that this is not a trigger, by the way. This sphere collider needs to be an actual collider. Let's go over to the world AI manager, wherever you feel like it fits in. Just go ahead and make a header for this. I'm going to call this uh, beacon prefab. And you want to make the variable type a game object. I mean, you could make it a activation beacon to get the game object from just that instantiate it. But I am going to make it a game object because we are instantiating it as a game object. So I'm going to call this beacon game object. Apply. Go back to your uh, AI character manager. First, let's go over to the beacon and drag in the beacon object under the world AI manager. So we have it there before I forget. Now, create activation beacon back in the AI character manager. We're going to say game object beacon game object is equal to instantiate world AI manager instance dot beacon game object. How many times have I said beacon so far in this video? Beacon game object dot transform dot position is equal to transform dot position. It's starting to lose all meaning. Seriously. Uh, okay, so right after we instantiate it, we want to set the owner by saying beacon, as in our variable uh, for our beacon, is equal to beacon game object dot get component AI activation beacon. And then we're going to say beacon dot set owner, and of course we pass this as in the AI character manager variable, so this will be the owner of that beacon. All right, very good. So we still uh, don't actually call create this beacon anywhere, so we want to call this on on network spawn, okay? So create activation beacon just like that. Now, we want to also disable our AI the second we spawn them, so the beacon will activate, and then if we happen to be within range, we load into the scene, it will activate, but we'll get to that. So duplicate your beacon, call this one beacon detector, make the radius as large as you want it to be for 
However, any everything in this radius is going to be active, basically. Keep in mind, this is, I believe, the general units for units meters. So this is 65 meters. Uh, add your beacon detector script to this. And we got to give this another layer. This is going to be a beacon detector layer. So we're going to call this, I'm going to layer 30, beacon detector. And now let's set up the physics transforms for it. Set the proper layer. Make sure you don't forget to do that. So layer beacon detector. Uh, I'm going to save this as original prefab, of course. Project settings, we're going to go down to the physics and then go to settings, hit your layer collision matrix, go through beacon detector and on tick everything on this, except for you want to keep on our character as in the AI characters. When we leave it, we deactivate them, but also the beacon and the beacon should only interact with the beacon detector. That's it. So again, the beacon detector gets characters and it gets the beacon uh, and the beacon only gets the beacon detector. So let's go to the player prefab. I'm going to drop in my beacon as a child object under the player right here at his feet. Make sure you set the layer properly and I'm going to save that. Um, next, I'm going to go back to my project. I'm going to look up my AI character spawner right at the end of attempt to spawn character. If the character is not null, the AI character script, we're going to deactivate it by saying AI character, AI character network manager dot is active is equal to false is active dot value. This makes it so it turns it off, and if you load in the world and you're next to it, it will turn back on immediately. Don't worry about that. But every AI you spawn, they will turn off until you are within range. My girlfriend is vacuuming. If you can hear that, I apologize. So let's go into the world here. I'm going to make uh, this little platform. I'm going to put this guy really far away. He's beyond 65 meters, just beyond it from where I start. I'm going to go to my AI, or sorry, my beacon detector at a rigid body. I need to do that because it is a child of my player. It needs to act as its own collider. On tick, use gravity. Tick yeah, is kinematic. And I'm forgetting something. I'm going to figure it out for sure. I did. I forgot. I'm going to also make this uh, player manager variable public here. And I'm just going to drag it in in the inspector. Um, and also over here on AI activation beacon, we're not supposed to get the player. We're supposed to get the beacon detector. That's my bad. I was referencing my Nephilim notes. So we're going to do that by saying other dot get component beacon detector. Because remember, it only interacts with the layer that the beacon detector is on. And then we can say if the detector is null, simply return. And then we use the detector to get the player because we have it stored there. So we say detector dot player, and then we can save that. And I am going to go over to uh, and delete this this player check because it's never going to be null because we're going to drag it in in the inspector on my player prefab here. Boom. So our beacon detector has our player variable. We're going to save that. I'm still forgetting something though. Uh, it should be a trigger on the beacon detector. And now you can see it is, should work. Let's just jump into the scene and test this. All right, so I'm in my scene and I can see these three guys spawned, perfect. So they are active, but the guy in the platform, he is not here, where's the platform? I think he's not here. Here's the platform, he's not here. So if I walk a bit closer to this platform, we should see that he comes into view. So I'm just gonna go down here now and click the player so you can see my beacon. Uh, you see the, see the sphere here in the scene view. As I get closer, you should see that he will in fact come into view and boom, yes, there he is. And you can see he saves the sleeping state animation because we did that trick last time the animator where we're saving the animator state. So even though his game object is completely disactive, uh, inactive, when he comes back online, he's still in the same proper animation. So there you go, guys. As you enter and exit, uh, he's going to enable and disable. This is just a very simplistic way to save memory if you have a very AI-dense environment. And if you've got stuff like dungeons and whatnot and lots of corridors or even, you know, if you have big open spaces that are hidden or obscured by some obstacles, you won't even notice this most of the time. Play around with the distance um, if you decide to use this system. I use that Nephilim, and I have a big open areas, and I still find this is plenty good enough. Uh, I don't really see pop-ins on anything very often. If I do, it's very easy to mitigate it by using the environment more clever. Thank you very much, as always, for tuning in, and I hope you have a very lovely weekend. As always, an immense thank you to my patrons. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you to everyone who takes the time to like and comment in the videos. Seriously. You have my gratitude. If you guys are ready for it, we're going to get ready to learn how to set this game up on Steam. If you want me to cover some more AI stuff first, I will, but we're going to come back and revisit AI anyway. That is all for me because at this point I am rambling. Once again, have a lovely weekend. See you guys next week.